Hello again. This is Math 2233 coming to you from the College to Page. And the title of this lecture is Some Applications of Triple Integrals. As always, please be an active learner while watching this video. Applications of Triple Integrals. Recall that if f of x is bigger than 0, then the single integral, the integral from a to b of f of x dx, represents the area under the curve, y equal f of x from a to b. And if f of x is greater than 0, then the double integral, the integral over a region d in the xy plane of f of x dA, the area, represents the volume uh, under the curve z equals f of xy and above d. The corresponding interpretation of a triple integral, the integral, uh, triple integral over a solid E, f of x, y, z, dv, where f of x is greater than zero, is not very useful. That is, the interpretation is not very useful because it would be a hypervolume of a four-dimensional object, and of course, that is very difficult to visualize. Remember that E is just the domain of the function f, and the graph of um, this is like w equals f of x, y, z lies in four-dimensional space. Nevertheless, the triple integral uh, can be interpreted in different ways and in different physical situations depending on the physical interpretations of x, y, z and f of x, y, z. Uh, it can be very important. Let's begin, as we did it with double integrals, with a special case where f of x, y, z is equal to 1 for all points in the solid E, then the triple integral does represent the volume of E. Because you're integrating 1, this is dV, so you get V, which is the volume. But as I did in the uh, two-dimensional case, I want to stress that the units don't match, although the number does. The units on this would be, for example, uh, meters to the fourth, and the units of this would be meters cubed. So the numbers match, the units do not. Uh, so here's a problem for you to ponder. Use a triple integral to find the volume of a tetrahedron, T. And the tetrahedron is defined, by, or it's bounded, let's do it that way, uh, is bounded uh, by the planes x plus 2y plus z equal 2, comma, x equal 2y, comma, x equal 0, comma, and z equal 0. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. All right, so we're going to uh, graph this. And when we graph this, and we've actually graphed this one before, it's bounded on top by the tetrahedron. Uh, here is the uh, plane uh, that is y is equal to 2x, uh, and the other two are the uh, x equals 0. And uh, what? Uh, C and uh, z equals zero. So that is the tetrahedron that we would uh, draw. And as always, we're concerned about the projection uh, down here to z equal zero because that's the domain where we're going to be um, uh, integrating over at least for the two-dimensional part of this. So uh, this is what we uh, get as the uh, solid, and this is the projection into the xy plane. And just looking ahead, we're going to be fixing x and integrating over y. So from this drawing, we see that uh, what will happen is we will go from uh, x uh, over 2 to uh, 1 minus 2x uh, once I solve for y. OK, so the volume then is the triple integral over t dv. And you almost always start with z. So z goes from 0 up to this thing, and I solve for z. So it goes from 0 up to 2 minus x minus 2y. So that is dz we integrate first. Then we have uh, this is going to be then doing dy dx. Now that means we're fixing the x, and that's why we draw this picture. So the y next is going to be integrated from x over 2 to 1 minus 2x. And finally, the x is going to go from 
0 to 1. So we're going to compute the integral then. Uh, when we integrate uh, dz, we just get z. We plug in that and 0 and subtract, and we get this. This is a function of x and y. And you should complete this integral, but we're just showing you the final answer. Uh, you're going to get one-third if you complete this uh, integral. All the applications of double integrals that we talked about can be immediately extended to triple integrals. And in fact, I'll comment that since our space is three-dimensional, these in some cases are less artificial than the two-dimensional cases. For example, if the density function of a solid object that operates, uh, that occupies the uh, solid E is, and this is a three-dimensional region, is rho of x, y, z. That means it can uh, the, the density depends on where you are. And you use mass per unit volume, which is really the way we tend to define um, density to start with at a given point. Then its mass is found by integrating over the entire solid, the density and mass. And so this is uh, just really taking density equals mass over volume and dealing with it in a continuous setting. So the mass is equal to the triple integral over E. This is the mass of E. And it's going to be rho, the density of x, y, z, dv. And the moments about its three coordinate planes also are going to be defined similarly. As before then, the moment about the yz plane is given by this expression, a triple integral. The moment about the xz plane is given by this, a triple integral. And about the xy plane is given by this, again a triple integral. And the center of mass is located at the point x bar, y bar, z bar, where x bar is, this moment divided by m y bar is this moment divided by m, and z bar is this moment divided by m. We'll do an example of this in a bit. <clears throat> Another important physics topic is the moment of inertia about the three coordinate axes. And so here um, we get the moment uh, about the x-axis is given by this expression, the moment, notice that these are second order effects, about the y-axis is given by this, and the moment about the z-axis is given by this integral. There are applications to electricity also. The total electrical charge is the integral of, now here you have sigma x, y, z, but that is the charge density for volume by the volume. And again, the charge density can depend on where you are. And to probability theory, if we have three continuous random variables, x, y, and z, their joint probability distribution is the uh, function such that the probability that x, y, z lies uh, in E is given by, the, so the joint probability that x, y, z is in E is given by, and it's the uh, integral over the solid E, f of x, y, z, dv where uh, this f of x, y, z is a joint density function, which satisfies these conditions, this one, and the total integral is equal to 1. And so uh, this could end up being an iterated integral like this. So if you wanted to compute the probability that x is between a and b, y is between c and d, and z is between r and s, you would compute this integral, and there is a typo here. Instead of x, y, z, this should be f of x, y, and z. I promised you would actually do a calculation, so here I'm asking you to find the center of mass of a, of a solid of constant density. Now this is a simplification because that means rho is equal to a constant. It's just rho. Rho of x, y, z is equal to 1. That is bounded by the parabolic cylinder x equal y squared and the planes x equals z. z equals 0 and x equals 1. So you want to sketch this. You know what to do.
let's see how you did. So the graph of this is going to look like this. At the top is a circle Z equal X. So that is a flat uh, plane going up like that. Uh, but then uh, what we have is a parabolic. Uh, so that's the top and the, and, and the bottom is going to go be Z equals zero. So later on, we're going to go from zero to X when we integrate with DZ first. Uh, the parabolic cylinder x equal y squared looks like this. And uh, in this case, we're integrating uh, from, uh, we're uh, uh, fixing uh, y and we're integrating uh, on x. So when we fix y, uh, we're going to go from, uh, for x, we will go from y squared to 1. And so we have that and the density was just equal to rho. So the mass then is equal to, that's the first calculation we do, is going to be the triple integral over the solid of rho dv. This is the iterated integral that I think I already explained. Oh, the way we get that y uh, goes from minus one to one is we consider uh, these um, uh, points of intersection here. So when x is 1, y goes from minus 1 to uh, 1. Those are the boundary points that we, uh, that we have there. So we go from, uh, this is the integral we evaluate. Uh, rho gets pulled all the way out. We integrate from 0 to x of uh, just 1 dz. We get x. Then we integrate this, and that means it's going to be x squared over 2. Those are the end points. I substitute in and simplify, and I have now a one-half that I can pull out again. So now I have rho over 2. I have this, uh, and I'm integrating this dy. And uh, oh, the, going from here to here, I recognize that this is an even function. So going from minus 1 to 1 is the same as 2 times going from 0 to 1. So I simplified the integral because it's easier to evaluate with a 0. And I integrate. This is going to be y minus y to the fifth over 5. Evaluate that at 1 and 0. And I get 4 rho over 5. Now, because of the symmetry of E and rho, both are symmetric with respect to the xz plane, we know that that moment is equal to 0. And so y bar, in fact, is going to be equal to zero. But we'll calculate the other moments. So we're calculating this moment. This is the formula that we have. And uh, this is actually the same integration that we did before, at least the same limits of integration. Uh, before, we didn't have the x in there, but now we do. That changes the integral just slightly. Uh, so when we integrate dz, um, what we're going to uh, get is you go from 0 to x. So this x is a constant, but then you plug in another constant, you get x squared. So that is, uh, uh, that is good. And uh, then dy, or then the x, we integrate this, this way. And lastly, uh, and again, we do the technique of changing because this is a, um, this is a, um, uh, when I substitute this in, I get an even function of y. So instead of integrating from um, uh, minus 1 to 1, I can integrate from 0 to 1 and multiply by 2, and I pull out the 3. So that's how come I have 2 rho over 3. I do the calculation, I get 4 rho over 7. And similarly, this integral is going to be the triple integral over E. This is the definition of that uh, integral. And this is my calculation. And it goes much as before. And I get 2 rho over 7. Now I'm going to have to take each of these and divide it by m. And so that's the calculation that I do to get my coordinates of the center of mass. Uh, x bar, y bar, z bar. I get this. And remember, we had this one was 0 because of the symmetries in the problem. If you actually did the calculations, you would get 0 as well. And this is going to be uh, 5 over um, 7, 0 and 5 over 14. A very good example. And I could ask you a problem such as this sometime in the future.
In closing, now more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math. It will make you strong. And now more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other. Remember, we are all in this together. May God bless you all.